All right, good evening. How is everybody doing? A couple minutes early, so I'll just give it a, a few minutes for everybody to hop on. <clears throat> See, I see uh, John. Hey, John, how are you? Hey, hey Liesel. Hi, Liesel. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I think I got something decent, halfway decent prepared for everybody. Maybe. <laughs> uh, teaching is not my strongest skill. I don't think. <clears throat> well, I don't know, maybe I'm too hard on myself. Just want to give it a, just a couple minutes before I start, give people a chance to hop on. Liesl, how you doing? Liesl, you doing okay? How's the shirt stuff going? I see you're doing a lot of tie-dye stuff. It's pretty cool. Oh, thanks. John. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh man. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, Wesley's on. Hi, Wesley. How are you? <clears throat> Just one more minute. One more minute, guys. Well, let me know how things are going with you guys. What are you guys up to? We'll get started here in about a minute. All right. Good, good, Wes. Good. <clears throat> I've never tried any of these little... Uh, Whatever these little things are, these little background things. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that, I'm sparkly. It's this one. Oh, oh my goodness. Picture. During the 100 degree heat in California, man, I'm with you. It has been triple digits in Bandera too. For a good, we had a pretty long streak of triple digits here. Not fun, but better than being uh, freezing cold, right? So that's good. <clears throat> All right, well, let's get started, huh? So I am, uh, so we're still in Colossians. Right, big surprise. Um, we are. I'm going to focus on verses uh, 12 through 17. I'm just going to touch like on just a few, few uh, verses here that really just popped, popped out um, to me, anyways. And uh, and so hopefully it's, uh, hopefully you find it uh, useful. Uh, let me read it for you, and uh, here's, a, here's what it says. Uh, Therefore, 
as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is perfect, I'm sorry, which is the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, te in, I'm sorry, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I want to point out is that yet again we see another therefore solidifying once again what he said previously which is but Christ is all and in all therefore as God's chosen ones holy and dearly loved put on compassion kindness and so on and he says he says um, put on put on and and um, but what's interesting about that word there is is it's the it, it brings this uh, idea of you sinking into and with that it has absolutely nothing to do with your efforts there you go you can I guess we can all just chew on that for a little bit and be happy right um, <clears throat> And he's also saying, he's already telling you, you are chosen, you are already holy, you are already loved. It's good news. And then moving on, he says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Now, bearing is uh, it's a little different. It's not necessarily about... Oh, I've got to deal with this person again. I've got to go clock in and work with this grumpy guy. Or I've got to deal with my grumpy neighbor again. <clears throat> that's not bearing. No, that's uh, it's talking about relationship and doing life together. And being there for one another. Uh, through the really good times as well as through the really tough times. And uh, I think most of us, if not all of us, are married. And so we know what it's like to go through really great times. And we know what it's like to go through really tough times. Uh, I've been, uh, actually, uh, next week on Monday is uh, my wife and I's 12 year anniversary. And uh, throughout those 12 years, we've been through some really great times growing together and getting to know each other and all of the fun stuff that comes with it. But if anybody paints this picture that you have this perfect marriage or, or that you don't go through tough times, they're, I don't think they're telling the truth because we've been through tough times too but we were bearing one another and encouraging one another through that relation. Same goes with friends. I, I have friends that, um, that we were good friends uh, for many, many years and I've seen my friends go through really hard times. They've seen me go through hard times, yet we're still there for one another even though sometimes we can annoy each other, right? That's what that means. 
Yeah. <laughs> Forgiving one another if uh, anyone has any grievance against another. So just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Wow. So yeah, let's talk about a little bit about forgiving. I don't know if you guys saw my little reel. I tried to do a reel, a couple reels. Um, it was a five-part little uh, reel series, and I was talking about forgiveness. And I was ex trying to explain that when it comes to forgiving someone, there isn't, um, there's no transaction in forgiveness. Let me, let me just paint the picture for you just a little bit. Here's kind of what went through my mind as I was thinking about this, is that there, there isn't, uh, say like a, a, a grocery store in the spiritual realm, right? Uh, as, as some of us, some charismatics really love to talk about that, I guess. Or at least I've heard it said in my past, but. And in this grocery store, there's not any aisles where you go down an aisle with your basket and you're not necessarily picking things off the aisle. And these things are either represent uh, what you need forgiveness of or whatever it is that you need to forgive someone else for right okay so it's vice versa and after you get done picking these things off the shelf and you find yourself going to the checkout where you start to load unload your basket full of things and you know what there is no debit card hmm there's no machine to put your debit card in to do this transaction. And so I was thinking about this. How do I, how do I even begin to explain what forgiveness is? Like, how, how do I communicate this to you? So that, it, so that it's uh, something practical. Now, there's definitely the, the you know, I'm sure all of us, um, or I would, I would presume that, you know, we've all had some life already behind us and um, you might have already gone through some type of counseling and counseling works it really does it's so helpful uh, so there's certainly this aspect of forgiveness where you can um, you know take some very practical steps like you can confess you know this forgiveness you can say I forgive so and so for such and such and that's all fine uh, I'm definitely not uh, knocking that in any way and um, but I, I just want you to know that I, I do see that I see that there is those practical steps that we can take right um, and so But here, here's what, here's the mystery for me, and here's what's so beautiful about that, is that where, where does the strength to forgive come from? Is it, isn't it dunamis? Where does the power to forgive even begin? And so if I, if I take ownership of forgiving, uh, whatever it is, if I take ownership of that, then how do I give God all the glory, right? To him be all the glory. And so it becomes this wonderful mystery that you, you just, all you can do is just wonder at it. And you look back and you, you look back at certain places or, you know, certain timelines of your life and you can see how a miracle took place. Where does that come from? It's not of my own. It, it would be like trying to explain salvation in a way. Similar, I think. And... 
it's this me forgiving someone doesn't necessarily solidify no forgiveness has already been true it's objective right not subjective and I think you know it's it's definitely easier when we uh, do as the Lord uh, guides us to do which is to forgive life seems to be just, just a little bit better it seems to be far more enjoyable I hope this is uh, is this um, you know hopefully I'm I'm conveying this thought this beautiful gift that we have and the gift of this ability or, or this gift of being able to partner with him to forgive it is um, astonishing right <laughs> so to forgive uh, forgive one another since because he's forgiven us so we live from that objective truth first and foremost and he gives us the power to forgive others this is all in relationship okay this is all happening in this in this relationship you can't have one without the other I mean yeah yeah you can't have one without the other I'm so convinced of that so then moving on it says here um, let's see above all put on love which is the perfect bond of unity um, so again unity um, actually the the Phillips translation puts it like this uh, love is the golden chain of all virtues Isn't that wonderful and uh, but one of the things I want to note here is is that to remember <clears throat> that love does not define God it's very important it is God who defines love he is the beginning and he is the end therefore he defines it okay and uh, and it's better that way I think right because there's so many thoughts about love that are so skewed that are not founded on him you know on that he is the beginning and he is the end so remember that remember that is that love does not define God okay God defines love it's the other way around um, yeah so love is the golden chain of all virtues as the Phillips translation um, and so then in 15 verse 15 and let the peace of Christ to which you were you were also called in one body rule your hearts and be thankful okay now this one's fun sorry moving the computer here just a little bit I'm trying to situate nope not gonna work sorry guys hang on okay so first of all it is the peace of God it's not your peace it's not you trying to make this peace happen <clears throat> How can you, right? How can we? It is the peace of God. And <clears throat> as it says here, uh, let's see, let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts. Now here's, here's something really fun. So, um, this little section there where it says um, rule your heart rule it has uh, it has the um, 
Um, it actually means umpire. Um, like, like in the, you know, like in baseball, the umpire that calls, the sh you know, that calls the strikes or, or whatever, you know, strike one, strike two, that guy. Um, <clears throat> they had umpires back then in the, uh, ancient, uh, Greek cultures, you know, for the Olympics. And, um, Francois makes note of it too, by the way, if you have the, the mirror, uh, study Bible. So if I could read it, something kind of like this, so the, the, the peace of God, or, or the peace of God is the umpire of your heart. You see that? Mm. It's something that is, uh, like the King James Version would probably say, brought, wrought out of you, is the peace of God. He is the beginning, again, he is the beginning and the end. That includes peace, it includes forgiveness, it includes salvation, it includes your neighbor and your stubborn family members too. <laughs> it really does. Uh, so he is the umpire of our hearts. And then it says, and to be thankful, right? It says, and be thankful. So be <clears throat> is uh, is a Greek word called, um, I think it's uh, genimai, genimai? I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyways, it, it literally means to become or be birthed. Thankfulness is birthed out of you and me because he is the empire of our hearts because he is the king of peace and because he supplies peace thankfulness is just uh, it is uh, an extension of realizing everything that he's done on our behalf uh, it is not the dung beetle uh, rolling a pile of poo up a hill and then uh, <laughs> tragically misses a step and ends up at the bottom of the hill. That's not how thankfulness works. It's not something that you try to do. It, 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 it's birthed out of our hearts, but our innermost being. Okay, now this next part, <clears throat> uh, verse 16, is... I, I don't know how to wrap my thoughts around it, but um, in 16 he says, Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you. And let the word of Christ, the word of Christ, dwell or indwell richly among you and it reminds me of John uh, the prologue of John you know in the beginning was the word I can't help but wonder and I cannot prove it I don't think anybody could disprove it maybe they could But I can't wonder, I can't help but wonder if there's a little bit of uh, some a play on words there with word. That the word of Christ dwell richly among you. And we know that Christ is, he came with a message, but we also know that <clears throat> he is the message. Christ is the as, as we've learned, Christ is the embodiment of God himself, God the Father. That means that when I see Christ, I see the Father, and there is no question of the Father. I see a perfect representation. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, dwell richly among you. 
Hmm? And I'll share a little story with you. Um, before I moved to Bandera, we lived in another park where um, for about a year and routinely we, we walk our dog, you know, once in the morning, sometimes during lunch, if it's not too hot in the summer. <clears throat> and then once in the evening, usually after dinner. <clears throat> and um, occasionally people would see us, you know, and say hi and talk to us, you know. But it wasn't until towards the end of our, uh, our stay there so it probably was um somewhere around april maybe march i started to let people know that we're moving uh, that we're going to relocate to bandera and i told them why i told them that i wanted to be closer to uh, ministry here in bandera and to participate with what's going on and to learn and and grow <clears throat> i had several people tell me a few different people say I knew it I just knew it I knew there was something different about you couldn't pinpoint it I wasn't quite sure what it was but I knew it I knew that there was something different about you let the word of Christ dwell richly among you talking about our daily lives in exuding and demonstrating who the Trinity is here's another one let me tell you another story that just happened um, I just got a job part-time job I am officially a bartender serving beer and at a local brewery here in town. And I went in for an interview. It's probably been about a week and a half now. I had a conversation uh, with the owners. I told them my story. I just told them why I'm here. Uh, I told them that I, I had my own side business that I do. I uh, told them about the struggles that, I, uh, that I've been going through. And... I don't know. We just kind of we just made it off, right? It was um, it it was very effortless. And so I give her some references, people to call that can um, you know reassure them of you know my character and who I am and what I'm doing here. And one of the references called me on the phone and said, "Hey, I just spoke to your boss. I, I guess you got the job." And uh, he and he told me he said, "Man, the, the the owner said I've never talked, I've never talked to anyone and felt like I could trust them immediately. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you. Does that hit home with you guys?" So I see Christ, I see Christ in the owners. I see Christ in the guy that's had a little too much to drink or the lady that's had a little too much to drink. I see Christ. I see Christ in the, uh, in the musician, you know, the, the band. Um, Christ is in all, is all, and in all. Isn't that something? Beautiful mystery. And then, yeah, let's see. Oh, I remember. Okay, so I wanted to end wanted to end by reading a quote from uh, I'm going to quote Robert Capon from uh, his book 
in grace and judgment. It's uh, all about the parables. So this is a quote from page 177. <clears throat> um, and this is about... If you, if you want to just tie this in to what I said about forgiveness and how forgiveness is, is a gift, salvation is a gift, um, and to also hold in mind that um, you know, none of this was accomplished by our behalf. It wasn't accomplished because I uttered words. It was... You know, the uttering of the words is for our benefit. It's not for his benefit. So, let me just read this to you. And just keep, this, keep all of that in mind. From the dim beginnings of our history, right up to the present day, there is not a man, woman, or child of us who has ever been immune to the temptation to think that the relationship between God and humanity can be repaired from our side by our efforts. Whether those efforts involved creedal correctness, cultic performances, or ethical achievements, or whether they amount to little more than crassly superstitious behavior, we are all, at some deep level, committed to them. If we're not convinced that God can be conned into being favorable to us by dint of our doctrinal orthodoxy, or chicken sacrifices, or the gritting of our moral teeth, we still have a hard time shaking the belief that stepping over sidewalk cracks, or hanging up the bath towel so the label won't show, will somehow render the ruler of the universe kind-hearted, soft-headed, or both. But as the epistles to the Hebrews point out long ago, all such behavior is bunk. The blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sins, nor can any other religious act do what it sets out to do. Either it is ineffective for its purposes, or the supposedly effective intellectual, spiritual, or moral uprightness it counts on to do the job is simply unavailable. The point is, we haven't got a card in our hands that can take even a single trick against God. Religion, therefore, despite the correctness of its insistence that something needs to be done about our relationship with God, remains unqualified bad news. It traps us in a game we will always and everywhere lose. There we go. So that was the quote that I wanted to read to you guys. Okay, so I think that about does it, you guys. That is it. My time is up, and I will see you in the Hangout session.